painting workshop. My name is Priscilla Solis and I'm going to be your teacher and thank you for tuning in with Inspiration Fine Arts. I got into the art world by doing a lot of theater. I'm the historian, technical director, senior in charge for my theater company at Carnegie Vanguard High School. I'm a rising senior and today I'm going to be talking about watercolor paints. These are more of like a you wouldn't necessarily use watercolor paints in the theater because it's uh, it's not really one for coverage. It's more for aesthetic, as opposed to acrylic. You would you would use acrylic or acrylic interior paint or exterior paint in the theater. So this one's gonna be more of a hobbyist paint. So <laughs> more of a recreational paint, if you will. So let's get into it. knock out the materials for this lesson so you're just gonna need some brushes really I don't I do prefer a flat brush and I'm probably gonna be using that the most today there's really no right way to go with brushes it really depends on the job that you're doing because if you're doing geometric shapes or lines or any hard edges you want to use a flat brush any sort of curves you want to use a round brush so yeah I just have different sizes show you all what the different sizes do. Okay, next are the paints. I'm gonna use watercolor, of course, because that's this episode. I'm using red, blue, and yellow. I'm not gonna be using these black and white because these are, it really just turns into an ink wash whenever you use black. And then the white wouldn't even show up on the paper. So I'm using crimson red. These are the artist loft, by the way. You can really use any sort of water watercolors. These episodes aren't specific to any product. So yeah, crimson red, cobalt blue, and lemon yellow. So those are the three I'm going to be using today. Remember, these aren't the primary colors. We'll get into that later though. Next, you're going to need some sort of bowl of clean water with no soap in it. And then you're going to need something to hold soapy water to clean your brushes. But remember, if you're using, especially with watercolors, if you're using water for a wash, you don't want to use soapy water because then it's going to break up the paint and it's going to not look good. And then I'm just going to use a pencil to take notes. And then this is multimedia paper. Let me show you all the specific brand I use because this was relatively cheap. The Strathmore Mixed Media, 98 pound. Makes media paper pretty much just goes a long way. It's a lot of it and they're pretty big pieces. I usually just cut them up into like index cards pieces to make small, tiny art pieces, but it's up to you. So let's start. This episode also, by the way, as a preface, is gonna be a little bit more improvised than our last episode, but that's okay. So one. flat wash. Here we go. I'm going to use red for this. As you can see, oh, this is a fun little tip. If you don't want to just poke a hole in this with some kind of needle and, you know, it's not functional. That's why they have these little built-in pokey things <laughs> to... Eh in the caps so you just press down hard twist it a little bit and then boom and you've already got you got a little swatch there so that you don't even need to open up the tube or test the paint to see what color comes out of it that's pretty helpful okay so let me pour a little bit here yeah water watercolor paints are a bit more watery than acrylic paints that's just a given so a flat wash Water. Clean water, not soapy water. I also have my water off screen because I am on my bed and that's why I have this towel laid down because I do not have access to the desk <laughs> for this this episode. So you want you want just a little bit really. So you just want to tap it out. Also, quick little tip to keeping your brushes alive for a, make them last longer. Don't ever go past the 
this when dipping in paint or in water. And if you're gonna dip it in water past that, you don't wanna keep it in the water. You wanna take them out as soon as you're done washing them. So yeah, this is just a flat wash. Also, watercolors are translucent. So do what you will with that information. This is a flat wash. Simple as that. Dipping your brush in the paint, I mean, dipping your brush in the water and then dipping it in the paint a little bit. Just laying it on paper. I'm gonna clean off this brush in the soapy water. Watercolors are also very surprisingly easy to clean because they're water based. So are acrylics, but you'll see what I mean by easy to clean when we get to oils. Oils, you're gonna actually need a conditioner to keep your brushes good because oils will ruin brushes anyways <laughs> next is the next is the wet on dry so i'm gonna use a different color we'll use blue i haven't opened up these acrylics so you guys get to watch me open them up <laughs> little tubes compared to my acrylics which are gigantic okay clean off the brush dry the brush wet the brush with clean water after you've dried it then you're just gonna you're gonna you're gonna want to keep the water on the brush by the way like you don't want to tap it off as much for this as you would with the flat wash because Again, it's wet on dry, so. Yeah, wet on dry looks a lot like the flat wash, but this is the correct technique. Up here, I had a little bit too much paint on my brush, but down here, it's a bit more translucent, translucent than the flat wash. So let me wash my brush off in the soapy water. Dry it off. And then let's go on to the next technique, which is wet on wet. I don't know if I want to use yellow for this. I'm going to use red. Red is my favorite color. I don't even need to put any on the palette, this makeshift palette here. <laughs> so I'm going to be using a round brush for this. Let me write this down. So I'm going to be wetting my brush with clean water. Since this, is a, this, since this is a new brush, I don't need to wash it off in the soapy water. You wanna, you really wanna keep a good amount of water on your brush, like you don't wanna tap it off too much for a wet on wet. So you lay down a wet wash on your paper. Oh, this is when you see if you've invested in good paper. Because most papers will start to rub off a little bit if you put water on them. So keep that in mind. So you want to go in with your wet brush again, wet some, wet some paint, and then that's wet on wet. And if you want to, you can also go in with the, here's another technique for wet on wet instead of just doing like a flat wash like that, you can lay down some water. It's not fully clean water, apologies. Lay down some water, take some of the paint, and just gently tap it. I know this is how people gently tap it. And you'll see that the paint will start to spread. So yeah, that's just a fun little other technique to that, a technique to the technique. So, next is a graded wash. Now these are my favorite. I remember being in the second grade and just having complete fun with these. Okay, graded wash. So we're going to, there's two ways to do this. You can do it with a, just monochrome with one color or with 
two colors. So I'm gonna show both. You're gonna lay down a you're gonna lay down some water. Okay. Then you're going to take some paint. And you're gonna lay this down at the top, and then you're just gonna blend it out going towards the bottom. the ombre more dark just add more add more paint to your brush instead of water and then go down and then if you ever like make it too pigmented at the bottom to where it just looks like all one color just put a little bit of more water on your brush Cool, so this is how you do it with two colors. You're gonna do the same thing, you're gonna lay down some water. This is how people usually make sunsets with a watercolor. You're gonna pick up some paint. You're gonna look for where the wash is at and then you're just gonna gently blend. Remember, you want more at the top. You want it to be more pigmented so you can pick up, pick up more paint on your brush and then redo the top. You're gonna add some to one half, then clean your brush, keep the water on your brush, and then go in for the second color. I don't want it to be as pigmented, so I'm just gonna Down, basically if you ever one color becomes too blended out you can just pick up more of that color more of that pigment and boom you get a nice little transition I think that transition is too stark for me so let me just pick up more blue brushing so to do this it sounds exactly it is what exactly it is what it sounds like basically so five this is also going to be a much shorter video than acrylics because i i personally prefer acrylics over watercolor but it, it really just depends on how you want your painting to look i feel like that just that that goes for any sort of media okay like for photography, you would just use a different lens for a different look. So it's just based on what you want. So dry brushing. You're just gonna go in with a dry brush, dip it in your paint, and go for it. That's it. Okay, next. We're going to be doing, uh-oh, I accidentally cleaned off my brush clean water. It's a bit of an issue, but that's okay. It's nothing we can work through. Nothing we can't work through. Okay. Next is a fun one. You're going to need, I forgot to mention in the materials list, you're going to need salt. This is kind of like an optional one. It's just to, it's just to make it more fun. <laughs> so, so six is going to be using salt. So for this, you're going to do a flat wash, pick up some water, put it in your paint, and then lay it down. And then, here's the fun part. You're gonna take a little bit of any sort of salt, I'm using sea salt, and then you're just gonna 
put it down on the on the paper. And then after a little bit, you'll see it start to pick up some of the water and the paint with it. Maybe do a second attempt and make it more watery so that you all are able to see it better. Because you can see it right now, but very slightly. Watery. Pick up more water with my brush. Oh, as you can see, I already picked up a little bit of salt. You wanna do this quickly. texture. Then as you can see in this light one, rub it around a little bit. It gives you a very rough texture with a very soft paint. So let's, let me tap that out. Uh oh, I got my finger in the paint. That's okay. No? Okay. Next, lifting off paint. So, you can pretty much do any one of these techniques for this technique. So, number seven, lifting off. Brush, take some paint, lay it down. You're going to want to work quickly with this. Because with watercolors, you just need to work quickly in general. Because they do dry pretty fast. I'm going to take these. I'm going to take a little bit of the other side of this piece of paper. You're going to want to scrunch it up. You can take anything with texture. And then you're just going to... Press down. You see it dried already. <laughs> let's, let's do that again. <laughs> Paint. Wash. While it's still wet. There you go. Texture. So yeah. And then there's also the... There's also another technique called the scratch off. So you just basically, like we did with the, like we did with the acrylics, you're gonna just scratch, scratch it off. That's exactly what it sounds like. I'm gonna wet my brush. Just pick up some of this blue paint. I'm gonna lay it down. And then I'm just gonna Scratch it off using the back of my There you go. Or you can use a painting not painter's knife. Whatever. So and the last technique for today is going to be the splatter, which is definitely the most fun. I remember being in elementary school and having the most fun with this. So wet your brush. You're gonna want it to be Kind of watery but not too watery to where it's not pigmented you're gonna pick up some paint then you're gonna take your finger splatter there you go all right so that's it for today's lesson thank you for tuning in with inspiration fine arts and thank you for letting me be your teacher for today i've got some paint in my hands now work um yeah i hope you guys learned a lot i hope you enjoyed the lesson i hope you have a good rest of your day thank you for tuning in once again and make sure to check the inspiration fine arts youtube channel for more videos about fine arts and just different resources <laughs> to create more art we need more artists in this world 
Once again, thank you and goodbye. Hi, we are your IFA co-founders. I'm Ellie. And I'm Miriam. And thank you so much for watching our videos. You guys can learn more about our cause down below at our website, www.inspirationfinearts.org. And if you like this video, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We couldn't be where we are without the support of you guys, so make sure to send in videos of the things that you've learned during classes and pictures of the art that you completed. Everything you send in will be featured on all our social media platforms. Thanks for supporting us, and until next time, go find your inspiration! inspiration.